good day and uh, welcome to Godly Thoughts. What a beautiful day to listen to the Word of God. I'm just so glad you chose this time to listen to the Word of God. It is not of anything uh, of your own planning. I believe three quarters of the things we do, God would have already known that we are going to do it. God would have already planned it for us to, to partake in that thing. There are certain times where we plan to do certain things but we end up failing and we do something else and we wonder why uh why it is like that there's a scripture that interests me that is in ephesians uh 3 verse 9 and uh paul is talking there and he says just think though i did nothing to deserve it and though i am the least deserving christian there is I was chosen for this special joy of telling the Gentiles about the endless treasures available to them in Christ. Listen to this. I was chosen to explain to everyone this plan that God the creator of all things is kept secret from the beginning. It then says on verse 10, God's purpose was to show his wisdom in in all its rich variety to all the rulers and authorities in heavenly realms they will see this when jews and gentiles are joined together with his church okay so before we go into this scripture we are talking about how god always has a plan and how nothing just happens how god always has a plan perhaps one of the biggest arguments people have had even as believers is does God actually have a plan or things just happen and God improvises as he goes or maybe we try to bring in God at at some point to maybe redirect us or whatever the case I want to tell you the truth God always plans and Paul is very excited about this he says you know what even rulers and principalities in heavenly places have to know these things it is God who foreplanned it and put me in place to be a minister unto the Gentiles. Before we go into this exciting topic, let us pray. Father, we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ because we know that you have got plans. In another scripture in Jeremiah, it says, I know, you say, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans not to harm you, but plans to bring you hope and an expected future. Father, we pray, Lord God, that we trust you to know. We trust, Lord God, we trust you to be in charge of our futures and our situation. We trust you, Lord God, to direct us and to navigate us through these difficult times that we are living. We pray all things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. Imagine this. Paul is learning about the Jews and about Jewish law. He grows and he learns under Galileo. He learns so many things under Galileo about the law and he grows up understanding the law so much and he was so passionate about the law. The only thing is that for the remainder of his career after meeting Jesus, Paul never spends time uh, chasing after the law. Instead, Paul is preaching the gospel to the Gentiles. Now, this should surprise you. He spends the majority of his life learning about the law only to spend the remainder of his life teaching against the law. Not just saying that the law is bad, but that we are now under grace. Have you ever spent your life learning about water only to stay in a landlocked area? Learning about the sea rather. Only to stay for the rest of your life in a landlocked area. It doesn't make any sense. But Paul was right where God wants him to be. Because then he would explain to the Jews how Jesus Christ is in the law. Where he is mentioned in the law. Where salvation is. Because There was conflict when Christianity was still growing. The Judaizers were trying to make the Gentiles into proselytes. That is people who are partially Jewish and partially Gentile. Jewish in the sense that they would have accepted the Jewish religion as their faith. But they wouldn't be Jews by birth. And so therefore they cannot go into the Holy of Holies and all that. You know how the Jewish law used to work. If you do not, we are going to dedicate a message from Hebrews where we talk about the law. Uh, but um, that will be another time. So today we are talking about this amazing subject of how indeed uh, humanity uh, is in 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 sync with God's plan. <clears throat> Some things happen and you think, does God see what's happening? Is there a plan for us to get us out of this situation? I have um, had the occasion of traveling across Africa as a journalist 
that is also my secular qualification i'm a journalist not just a journalist though i am also a published author among other things so i have had the occasion of traveling by plane to selected destinations and this is what i have come to understand when the pilot uh chatters the plane he doesn't communicate all the time about what he's planning to do sometimes you can hear via the announcer it goes kum boom he says something uh, excuse me ladies and gentlemen we are going to experience turbulence whatever he says something to you anyway to alert you about what's going to happen but there are times where the pilot has to deal with situations as they come without alerting you and you just have to trust him i remember we took off from zimbabwe to zambia at some point we were on our way to ethiopia and then we had to go through zambia on our way there uh the way we landed left a lot of people frazzled people were upset because the pilot made so many abrupt mistakes um, abrupt turns rather without warning people the, the the plane just would make a sudden descent or a sudden ascent and people were freaking out and nothing was being said on the announcer you see a lot of times when we are not being involved we feel left out and mostly afraid because we don't know what's happening we need to know what's happening to feel safe we need god to tell us what he's doing with our future to feel safe but there are many times where god does not fill us in on his plan so let me tell you this how would you like your wife if you are married and if you are in a relationship how much do you like your girlfriend did you know that when god made for adam his first wife or his first girlfriend he did not take a lot of adam's input into it now i see people making sex dolls and uh, people drawing cartoons of women i wonder if you were adam back in that time would you have drawn that sketch and maybe shown it to god like god i know you're trying to make a woman for me so let me just fill you in on what i expect here to look like and then you go into the drawing board and then you come back with a sketch and say more or less like this let's just be agreeing that she has to look more or less like this god did not consult a lot um with adam in fact he put adam to sleep imagine being locked out of a decision that would affect you for the rest of your life adam would spend several centuries remember adam lived for several hundred years and uh eve lived for several hundred years too adam was about to commit his life to eve eve was gonna make a mistake that would cost adam everything and adam first came to god and said you know what it is the woman who made for me you are the one who made there you you put me to sleep you never consulted me and you made it like this now look she's the one who told me to eat the fruit and i ate it you made it this way this is why so you see men want to be involved but sometimes god puts you out because he is sovereign and he knows what he's doing and he knows why he's doing it the way he wants to do it our opinions always do not always matter rather we have to understand that sometimes god is god he takes place in your very life makes executive decisions about where you are going to be there was a certain time i was staying in a place called kwekwe it's in the midlands and um a man of god was sent into my life and that man of god told me listen to me young man god is taking you to harare there's work for you to do in the capital city and i said ah, i don't see myself in harare a lot in fact i'm planning to go to gweru which is another place in the midlands and we even agreed with my wife let's go to gweru let's do something in gweru we took off we went to gweru except everything that began to happen in the next few weeks pointed to harare to a, to a point where we ended up both my wife and i staying in harare to this day you understand what i'm trying to say someone once said to me uh men plan and god laughs i don't know if that's exactly how it happens but we have to understand that in many times god has got a plan whatever the situation you're going through god has got a plan you need to trust him more importantly you need to express that trust to him in prayer when you pray don't freak out before god say god i know that i may not understand your plan for me but i know they are good for me help me to be content help me to be calm while you execute your plan for me but if you realize whatever is happening in your life cannot be god's plan there are sometimes where all the signs are pointing to demonic infestation demonic oppression and demonic oppression and obsession if that is the case in your life i invite you to go through our deliverance services they are already on youtube with the prayers that you can take to be freed from any bondage that is derailing you from god's plan for your life let us pray 
Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for this brother, for this sister, who feels like things could be going a very different route from where they see them going, a different direction from where they saw, they saw it going. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ, may you reach out and give them assurance that you are in control and everything is going to be fine. As you say in your word, be still and know that I am God. Help us, Lord God, to be still, even through these pandemics, even through these trials and wars and rumors of war. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen.